It was ancient Roman writer, scholar, and statesman Marcus Cicero who said, what is more agreeable than one's home? In this lesson, we're gonna calculate the affordability of monthly rent. We're gonna determine the relationship between square footage and monthly rent. We're gonna determine lease signing costs, and we're gonna calculate moving expenses. All to answer the question, where will you live? Before we get into it, let's make sure we're ready for this lesson by doing warm up number two. Find the linear equation for the scatter plot with the points 114, 212, 319, 427, and 526. In a previous lesson, we have done the line of best fit on a spreadsheet. So saving those resources, why not go ahead and use that now on the spreadsheet? To do this, I simply filled in all of the X and Y values, and you can see how I then calculated the slope by looking in the command bar. And now in the command bar, you can see how I found the Y intercept. So our line became Y is equal to 3.46 X plus 10.1. Now let's take a look at a problem you will be able to do by the end of this lesson. Samantha is moving from Madison, Wisconsin to La Crosse, Wisconsin. She will do all of the packing and unpacking with her brother. The moving company has quoted a price of $1,250 for eight hours of loading and unloading and driving 130 miles. The company quoted the same price if the truck drives an extra 30 miles to pick up Samantha's brother. Samantha figures that with her brother's help, she only needs to hire the movers for six hours. How much does the company charge per hour for loading and unloading? And how much do they charge per mile driving? We're gonna let X represent the hourly cost for loading and unloading and Y represent the per mile cost for renting the truck. So without her brother, it is expected to take eight hours. They will drive 130 miles and it'll cost $1,250. With her brother, it's expected to take six hours. They will drive 160 miles and it will still cost $1,250. So we can look at both equations as being 8X plus 130Y is equal to 1250 and 6X plus 160Y is equal to 1250. We're gonna use the elimination method to solve this systems of equations by multiplying the first equation by negative three and multiplying the second by four so that the coefficients of the X terms are opposite. Multiplying the first equation by negative three gives us negative 24X minus 390Y is equal to negative 3750. And multiplying the second equation by four gives us 24X plus 640Y is equal to 5,000. Now, if we add both of these equations together, the X's cancel out, giving us 250Y is equal to 1250. Divide both sides by 250 and Y is equal to five. Well, knowing that Y is equal to five, we can go to that first equation where we had 8x plus 130y is equal to 1250. Substitute the value five in for y, giving us 8x plus 130 times five is equal to 1250. Now 130 times five is 650. So we're gonna subtract 650 from both sides, giving us 8x is equal to 600. Dividing both sides by eight gives us x is equal to 75. Samantha will pay $75 per hour for loading and unloading and $5 per mile for the truck rental. Have you ever imagined what it would be like to have your own place? For many teenagers, the progression of living arrangements is from a family home to a dorm room to apartment or home ownership. Finding a place to live on your own isn't easy. There are many decisions to make. Your first experience in independent living will probably be in a rented apartment. When you rent an apartment, you are the tenant and the owner of the apartment is the landlord. As you look for an apartment to rent, you will see that they come in furnished or unfurnished. The cost of renting a furnished apartment includes the use of the landlord's furniture in that apartment. When you rent an unfurnished apartment, you must provide your own furniture. Before you move into any apartment, you must sign a lease. A lease is a written agreement between the landlord and the tenant that details the amount of rent and the length of time that you will live in the apartment. The lease states the rules and regulations that must be followed by the tenant and the landlord. After a lease expires or ends, the tenant may sign a new lease for a new period of time, and this lease may have an increase in the rent. The landlord has the 
right to evict a tenant if, for any reason, the tenant stops paying rent or has defaulted on the lease. While renting is a suitable option for many, others decide owning a home is their goal. There are many options for ownership. You can purchase a single family home, a multifamily home, a condominium, or a cooperative. Rather than renting an apartment, there is a possibility that you can purchase and own that apartment if it is part of the cooperative or condominium. A condominium is a form of home ownership where each unit is individually owned. Each individual unit is called a condominium or a condo. Condo owners own everything from the walls inside and are responsible for the maintenance of the inside of their own unit. The owners are charged a maintenance fee that is used to maintain common areas such as a lobby, lawn, roof, sidewalks, and roads. A cooperative or co-op apartment or residence is another form of home ownership. A co-op is a corporation. Co-op owners own shares in the corporation and the right to live in a unit. They are also responsible for the maintenance of the inside of their units. Here, we're gonna learn how to make sound decisions when considering rentals or purchasing based on available data. The US Census Bureau collects data on many aspects of the American way of life. The following chart illustrates the average amount that people paid for rent as a percentage of their income. In the years from 1985 through 2000, the average percentage of income spent on rent was about 24.4. But since the turn of the century, notice how that percentage has risen. Experts agree that as a rule, the prospective renter should budget 25 to 30 percent of their gross income for rent. Since 2005, renters have been at or above the upper bound of that recommendation. Unfortunately, recent reports indicate a large number of renters in America's big cities are paying 40% or more of their household income for rent. It is very important to keep the recommended percentage in mind as you shop for an apartment rental. Now, let's calculate the affordability of a monthly rent. Alex makes $61,992 per year and pays about 25% of his gross monthly income in federal and state taxes. He wants to find an apartment to rent. Estimate how much he can afford to pay for rent each month. Then determine how much money he will have after taxes and rent is paid. The recommended rule is about 25 to 30% of gross income for rent. A good estimate to use is 28%. Rent is paid on a monthly basis, so find Alex's gross monthly income. To do this, we're gonna take $61,992 and divide it by 12 to get $5,166. Alex's gross monthly income is $5,166, so we're gonna find 28% of his monthly income to estimate his affordable amount. To do this, we're gonna multiply this by 0.28 to get $1,446.48. So Alex can afford an apartment with a monthly rent of $1,446. Alex pays 25% of his gross monthly income in federal state taxes. So if we took that 5166 and multiplied it by 0.25, we're gonna get $1,291.50. That means that Alex is paying out $1,292 in taxes every single month. To find the amount remaining each month, we're gonna subtract both of those amounts from his monthly income. So 5166 minus 1446 minus 1292, and this is gonna give us $2,428. So Alex will have approximately $2,428 remaining. You could also find the remaining amount by determining the percentage of Alex's income that is not spent on taxes and rent. Subtracting these percentiles from 100% yields 47% since 100 minus 25 minus 28 is 47. You can verify that 47% of 5166 equals $2,428.02, which is close to the estimate found previously. Let's check our understanding of this. Bethany's monthly gross income is $3,840. She pays 24% of her monthly gross earnings in federal and state taxes and 15% for her student loan. Bethany uses 15% of her monthly gross income to pay towards her credit card balance. She wants to rent an apartment that'll cost $1,800 per month. Will she be able to make the payments without changing the amount she pays towards her student loans and credit card balances? 
No, she won't. After paying her taxes, loan, and credit card company, she's left with less than $1,800. She's going to need to find a less expensive apartment. Let's see this exactly. We take the 100% of her salary, subtract 24% that goes to taxes, subtract 15% that goes to her loans, and subtract 15% that goes towards her credit cards. This is going to leave us with 46%. Since she has 46% of her money left, 83.40 times 0.46 means she is left with $1,766.40 every month, quite a bit short of her $1,800 she needs. Once you have determined what you can afford to pay in rent, it's time to start looking at ads for rental properties. As with automobile ads, you should become familiar with the abbreviations that are used. And here are a few of the common ones. BA or BTH for bath, BR for bedroom, BW or B slash W for dishwasher, DR for dining room, DRMN for doorman, EIK for eat in kitchen, ELEV for elevator and building, GAR for garage, H slash W for hardwood floors, HTD for heat is included in rent, INCL HT slash HW for includes heat and hot water, mint means excellent condition, R-E-N-O-V means renovated, R-M means room, S-T-U means studio, S-P-A-C means spacious, W-I-C means walk-in closet, W slash D means washer and dryer, lowercase W slash D, H-K-U-P means washer and dryer hookup, W slash W means wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, Y-D means yard. In addition to explaining what the apartment has to offer, classified ads often include a square footage for each apartment. This number is the amount of floor space in the apartment. Now let's determine the relationship between square footage and monthly rent. Rufus and Maria have both been offered a new job in a different city. A real estate broker sent them a listing of apartments in their desired location showing the square footage in each apartment. Recall that we learned about how to do linear regressions and correlation coefficients back in the lesson on personal expenses as well as in the warm-up. We're going to use linear regression analysis to determine if there is a correlation between the square footage of rental property and the amount charged for monthly rent. What is the linear regression equation and interpret the correlation coefficient? I got y is equal to 0.91x plus 394.96. Now I used the linear regression in the spreadsheet, so let's take a look at that. You can see in the command bar the way that I found the slope, and now you can see in the command bar the way that I found the y-intercept. It is possible that you wound up with slightly different answers just based on where a computer may round a number. The correlation coefficient of 0.96 indicates that square footage is a strong predictor of the amount charged as rent for these apartments. Let's check our understanding of this. Based on example two, what is a good estimate for the amount of monthly rent charge for an 880 square foot apartment? This means we're going to take that equation, y is equal to 0.91 times 880 square feet plus 394.96. This is going to give us $1,195.76, or we might consider this approximately $1,200. Let's extend our understanding just a little further. Using that regression formula that we found in example two, how many square feet might an apartment with a monthly rent of $1,400 have? This $1,400 is the Y value, so we wind up with 1,400 is equal to 0.91X plus 394.96. Subtracting 394.96 from both sides, we get 1,005. 0.04 is equal to 0.9x. Dividing both sides by 0.9 means we get 1116.71 is x. So approximately 1100 square feet. It isn't enough to just have the first month's rent available. There are a number of fees that are associated with the rental of any property. Usually there is an application deposit. This amount, which is sometimes refundable, may vary between $100 and $400. It covers the cost of processing the application for the rental. Often a credit report is required. The fee for this report is usually under $25. 
A security deposit is money given to the landlord from the tenant as protection in the event that the tenant causes damage to the rented property. This deposit is refunded when the tenant moves out if there is no damage. The security deposit can range from one month to four months rent. In addition to the first month's rent paid in advance, many landlords also require the last month's rent to be paid at the time in move-in. This protects the landlord in the event that the tenant decides to break the lease and vacate the apartment earlier than agreed in the contract. If you use a broker to find an apartment, there will be an additional fee for the broker service, usually a percentage of a year's rent. Now let's determine the lease signing costs. Rufus and Maria paid a $200 application deposit for a 1150 square foot apartment in example two. They're required to provide a credit report that costs $25 and pay a security deposit equal to one month's rent. The landlord also requires the last month's rent at the time of signing the lease. The broker charged 10% of the yearly rent. How much should they expect to pay to be able to move into the apartment? So we know they have the application deposit, which is $200. We also know that there's gonna be the credit report of $25. A security deposit, which is one month's rent, is gonna be $1,595. There's also a last month's rent, which is $1,595. The brokerage fee, which is 10% of that year. So 1595 times 12 times 0.1 this is going to give us $1,914, so $1,914. There's also going to be that first month's rent of $1,595. So we're going to add up all of these amounts and find $6,924. Rufus and Maria should expect to pay $6,924 before moving into their apartment. Let's check our understanding of this. Larry is renting an apartment that'll cost our dollars per month. He must pay a $100 application fee and a $25 credit report fee. His security deposit is two months rent, and he must also pay the last month's rent upon signing the lease. His broker charges 5% of the total year's rent as a fee for finding the apartment. Express this in terms of R, the total cost of signing the lease. Well, let's first figure out the actual dollars that we know. We know that there is a 100 and there is a 125. So regardless of the number of months, we know that we have that many dollars that have to be put in. We can see that the security deposit is two months rent, which is two R. He must also pay the last month's rent, which is one R. We can expect him to have to pay the first month's rent, which would be another R. So currently we are at four months of the rent. But what is 5% of the total year? Well, that would be 12 of the R's. And if we multiply 12 by 0.05 for 5%, then what we find is that we get 0.6 R. So if we add 0.6 R to the four, we get 4.6 R, meaning they need 4.6 months rent plus $125. Whether you're renting or purchasing a home, you need to budget for moving expenses. When planning a move, you should consider all of the options available to you. You can elect to have someone do all of the packing, loading, transporting, unloading, and unpacking for you or you can do all or part of it yourself with or without the help from professionals. The cost of making a move depends on a variety of factors. How much of the work do you choose to do, the distance you're moving, the weight and size of your belongings, how accessible the items are at street level, are you on the first floor? Are there many flights of stairs? Is there an elevator? And the location of the pickup and drop off of your items. These are only a few of the factors that come into play when you're given a moving estimate. Many companies offer online services to help you. Now let's calculate moving expenses. Jay is moving from an apartment in Miami to one in Orlando. If Jay moves on a weekday, he'll need to hire movers for more hours of packing, loading, unloading, unpacking, because his friends will not be able to help him. If he moves on a weekend, he can get his friends to help, cutting down on the number of hours he'll need to hire movers. Move Out is a moving company that supplies movers, trucks, and moving equipment. They have given him the following moving estimates. Move Out charges a set hourly moving team rate for loading and unloading, and a different set hourly moving team rate for packing and unpacking. Determine the Move Out hourly rate. 
We're going to solve this problem by setting up a system of two equations. First, identify the variables to use, and we're going to let x represent the hourly cost of loading and unloading. Y will represent the hourly cost of packing and unpacking. Two equations can be written that model the moving costs. Weekday moves can cost 6x plus 5y equal 720. And weekend moves can cost 4x plus 2y is equal to 400. If we turn both of them into slope intercept form on the weekday, we get y is equal to 6 over 5 plus 144. And the weekend will turn into y is equal to negative 2x plus 200. Use the values slightly greater than x and y intercepts to determine an appropriate viewing window. In a weekday equation, the x-intercept is 120, and the y-intercept is 144. In the weekend equation, the x-intercept is 100, and the y-intercept is 200. The setting for viewing windows and the graph of two equations are shown. Use the intersect feature of your calculator. You can determine that the two lines intersect at the point 70, 60. This indicates that move out charges $70 per hour for loading and unloading and $60 per hour for packing and unpacking. Let's check our understanding of this. Using the information that we just found, suppose that Jay hired movers for P hours to pack and unpack and for L hours to load and unload. Can we write an expression that represents his moving costs for these services? Well, 60 hours spent packing and unpacking would be 60p. And when it comes to loading and unloading, since we know there's gonna be 70 hours of that, that would be 70L. And this would give the total cost of moving. The elimination method is a process of algebraically manipulating one or both equations so that the coefficients of one set of variable terms are opposite and will cancel out when the equations are combined as we're gonna show in the next example. Samantha is moving from Madison, Wisconsin to La Crosse, Wisconsin. She will do all of the packing and unpacking with her brother. The moving company has quoted a price of $1,250 for eight hours of loading and unloading and driving 130 miles. The company quoted the same price if the truck drives an extra 30 miles to pick up Samantha's brother. Samantha figures that with her brother's help, she only needs to hire the movers for six hours. How much does the company charge per hour for loading and unloading? And how much do they charge per mile driving? We're gonna let X represent the hourly cost for loading and unloading and Y represent the per mile cost for renting the truck. So without her brother, it is expected to take eight hours. They will drive 130 miles and it'll cost $1,250. With her brother, it's expected to take six hours. They will drive 160 miles and it will still cost $1,250. So we can look at both equations as being 8x plus 130y is equal to 1250 and 6x plus 160y is equal to 1250. We're going to use the elimination method to solve this systems of equations by multiplying the first equation by negative 3 and multiplying the second by 4 so that the coefficients of the x terms are opposite. Multiplying the first equation by negative 3 gives us negative 24x minus 390y is equal to negative 3750. And multiplying the second equation by 4 gives us 24x plus 640y is equal to 5,000. Now, if we add both of these equations together, the x's cancel out, giving us 250y is equal to 1250. Divide both sides by 250, and y is equal to 5. Well, knowing that y is equal to 5, we can go to that first equation where we had 8x plus 130y is equal to 1250. Substitute the value 5 in for y, giving us 8x plus 130 times 5 is equal to 1250. Now, 130 times 5 is 650. So we're going to subtract 650 from both sides, giving us 8x is equal to 600. Dividing both sides by 8 gives us x is equal to 75. Samantha will pay $75 per hour for loading and unloading and $5 per mile for the truck rental. Now, let's check our understanding. If you graph two equations in example 5, what is the point of intersection? 
To do this, we're going to graph both lines on the same graph. This is going to give us a point of approximately 75.5.